All these are basically, we've got a, the, the basic carcass of the triangle nailed uh, together at this point. And the holes are pre-drilled. If you look on here, you can see all the holes have been pre-drilled. All these bunch of glue nailed. This is the finished product. Now this is an old panel that's left over. Come on over here, Travis, and get a little closer look at this. You can see they're, they're heavy, but you know, it's not more than uh, two guys can handle. So this, is, this dome you're looking at is for a 40-footer. It's two by six with three quarter inch plywood. You can see here, all these are pre-cut and they're all uh, cut exact. I mean, uh, you put a straight edge on there and it's all like their factory. And we'll show you how to do that on the video. Everything is cut to be exact. Like this is uh, 78. That's what it's supposed to be, a 78. It's not over. All these joints, like you, you'll see when we erect them. We show you how to cut the blocking. We show you how to lay that out. Uh, we're getting ready to cut these up to make these little T's that fit in here. So everything's prefabricated. All right here. So. Here's a simple little jig. This is the hole drilling jig. We show you how to drill the holes. You know how to make the jig. Set it on there and drill the holes. We go through each step of the process. Drilling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what I want to do tonight, this this portion of the tape, we're going to prefabricate this triangle for you. And uh, the reason I'm showing you this is so that you can see uh, where your money's going, what you're uh, spending your money for as far as uh, uh, a project, a finished product. Uh, this will also work for uh, the do-it-yourselfers that are uh, planning on uh, using the do-it-yourself plans and building their own dome. And this is also a good thing to show your engineers we work with you on the engineers and we try to get you local engineers in your area that will support you with the building code officials that are there. Uh, rather than going to a company that does everybody. So if you show them uh, this part of the tape, they'll be sold on the structure and they won't have any problem uh, or they shouldn't have any problem once they see uh, how we're doing our uh, building techniques that everything's above code, beyond code. Uh, we build them to the highest standard uh, that I know how. Uh, and so it's, it's a good reference. When you get done looking at this, you can uh, take it on and show it to your uh, engineer. So well, the first thing after we get the carcass made, I set it up here on the table. This is one of the, uh, the equilateral triangles, the EEE or the blue, 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 if you guys have made your models. And I'll check the framework to see uh, how straight it is. I already know that the measurements, because uh, everything's cut exactly, it, it, there's no variation. So this looks pretty good on this side. I'll check it on this side. It looks pretty good there. And over here, it's got a little bow to the inside like this. So once I check out the carcass and make sure it's reasonable, I can kind of get an idea of what I'm uh, up against. I'll come and I'll mark halfway here. This is 78 and 8, so it'll be 39 to 16. This is 
is our T. At this portion of the tape, or at this part of the construction, we've assembled the carcass, we've drilled all the holes, and uh, the T's were made, and all the interior blocking, and the plywood's cut, so now we're just going to put it all together. What I'll do is take my glue, nice big healthy schmear of that. I set it right on that mark that I made there. It's halfway. Here's the glue that we use. We get it in Home Depot. We buy it in a five gallon jug and then break it down into one gallon uh, jugs. We put a little red dye in there so that you can see when it's done that there's glue, that the, the joints are glued. We're real liberal with it. Now you're talking uh, the overall construction cost of the house, you're talking uh, five gallons of glue are about $70. But the uh, the structural benefit is uh, it's worth every penny. What I'll do now is I'm going to tack this with the 8 penny nailer, 8 penny ring check. I'm just going to tack this to hold it in place. Get this nice and flush. Now, that's positioned in there where it needs to go and it won't, it doesn't have really much room to go anywhere. So, I'll take the glue. Wherever wood meets wood or any joint, joint to joint, wood to wood, gets glue. All these corners of the triangle and the carcass, they're glued before they're nailed. A little bit of glue does wonders as far as making this thing a shear pan. When I say a shear pan, what I'm talking about is one solid element. So it's like it's, it's grown out of one piece of tree. Everything is tied together. For those of you that are do-it-yourselfers, when you go to put the plywood to the carcass, if it doesn't fit, you done something wrong somewhere. Your fingers will always tell you better than uh, your eyes a lot of times. What I like to do is just get this spaced evenly from one side to the other to fill that. I can fill this. I can fill that. I know this side is good because I checked with the straight edge. Now I'm going to tack this. in just a little bit. Now what, what you can do with these screws is by putting the screw in here you can suck this this two by in this way. If you put it like this you can pull it back out so you can get it. You can see here it needs to go in just a hair. I'm going to pull this in here.
That looks good. Okay, once you get it set up and you got it where you like it, come back around over here. This end right here, this T, will be loose because we haven't nailed it in yet, so it's just kind of floating in there. What I want to do is get half on this, 11 and a quarter. I know that's where that T's at. You can see where the nails are at. And what I'm going to do is pull this up. I'm going to take two screws and pull that up. Yeah, pull that up there nice and tight. Just like so. Then the background over here. Put a little schlep of glue on there. Joint to joint. Like so, pick out the good side of your plywood. All this stuff is, is pre-cut. I mean, you have 30 of these triangles, you cut 30 of these, you have them sitting there waiting for when you're uh, putting it all together. They know how to nail. You know, just because you can shoot a nail gun doesn't make you a nail driver. If you put these nails too close to the edge, you're going to chip this wood out. So you need to be back at least an inch from that edge there. Uh, another thing is, if you shoot your nails and they go below the surface of the nail, then you're just tearing that plywood up. It doesn't have the overall strength capacity of a nail that's nice and flush. So adjust your gun accordingly and hold them back from those edges. Okay, uh, Travis it reminded me to uh, uh, show you that we nail everything on four inch centers or, or less. Uh, you know, the code requirements vary from six to eight inches. Uh, so we do everything on four inches. Uh, it's more nails, it's another box of nails, but you ask your engineers and they're gonna like that. When you're building a shear panel, like a hurricane panel, uh, they may run anywhere from uh, two inches uh, on the corners. Uh, people we've talked to said four inches on center is uh, is a good uh, way above what what's necessary. And we're using three quarter inch CDX, so. nails are just a little below uh, center. I laid a mark down here halfway so I know where that board's at. What I like to do is check and make sure uh, all the nails are going down good. We still got to put in the uh, blocking from the other side. But Check my nails periodically. We're going to turn it over. Make sure you don't have any nails coming through that did a good job nailing there. Now I'm going to do a little layout for my blocking and my 
paint code. I'm thinking what I use on this is 25. I've been doing a different triangle today. 25 and 7. 7 is for the paint. 25 is for the block. The idea of the paint is to seal up the wood so it doesn't lose all of its natural oils, you know, which prolongs the, the, the length or the lifetime of the, the wood. Uh, in older homes, these joints tend to dry out and then they get flaky. They soften up and they break up and that's where you're going to find the most damage in the older homes. If you plan on building a structure that's going to last a hundred years, my way of thinking is a little paint on these joints, same with the edges down there, we'll seal that up and it may last longer. Okay, so we got our blocking nail there. Seven inches on this. Interior frame. These blocks are cut. It's easier to cut them like this. They're the same as uh, these exterior cuts. Uh, but if you're going to do framing like this, you have to use some kind of spray-in insulation. <coughs> the isoneed foam or spray-in cellulose or something. It still meets, you know, two feet on center, so we cover the bases on that. Uh, the thing is, if we set them up like this, you can see this angle here is <clears throat> more than 45 degrees. It's like 60 degrees. And uh, it's a real sharp compound. You can't really do it on a radial arm saw. And it's a dangerous cut even with a, uh, a compound uh, miter box. So we like to do them this way. On doing the sheetrock, because you have a full Edge. Now remember, the other triangle is going to bolt up to this, so you're going to end up with two two bys here. So your sheetrock has a full inch and a half to screw to, which makes that easier. But you're also going to have 30 or 60, whatever it is, of these triangles. So when you lay out your sheetrock, you do it just like you do the plywood, and you can mark these off, pop your lines so that you know when you take the sheet over there and everything's laid out and you screw it in, you don't miss anything. You're not searching for wood all the time. Uh, sheet rockers, once they've got a dome like this, they actually like it. It's easier to do than a conventional uh, oh. It's all about engineering. Did you see that move there? Look, a sec, come in here and look, Trevor. I set these blocks in place on these marks where they need to go and then I mark them on the inside and I fold them in like this. Remember wherever wood meets wood we put glue, put a schlep in there, schlep in there. I know the engineers are digging this. They like that acupuncture. Nice big schlep right there. Yeah, I'm just going to tack this in with the eight. Just to hold it in place until I get the 16s on it. Domes, we're not putting our money into machinery, we're putting our money into people. The money that you're spending along with the value that you're getting on the dome is putting somebody to work. I did, didn't just come up with that lately, it's always been that way. So 
So consider that. Just kind of make sure that your nails are seated good. Want a good tight fit for that glue. You can see, come over here, Travis. Come over here and look at this joint. Show them that joint inside there. If you get over here, you can get it done. Okay, back over here. Now we're going to take the 16 penny nailer and nail all these joints. The corners have already been nailed. Now we're going to nail in the blocking that we put in. Get three nails. We'll try to put them in the opposing angles. second here let me explain that uh, or let me notify you something about children around these work tools children have very delicate ears and you'll see them flinch or cover up their ears whenever they're working around a saw or a nail gun or something you know don't don't bring them into a work environment like that because it damages their ears How do you know? Huh? What? Okay, so now we got a nail. Make sure all your nails are in good. Looks good. Check the inside. Because all the measurements are exact and the holes line up, we don't have to fight it. It goes together like it was designed. Put the color code pretty much so that you can see it anywhere. If, you're, if you got it up, you can look inside and see. If you're down on the ground, you can see the outside of it. You won't be able to see the color code. In pretty much any direction. Real simple technology. Okay, everything's there. I noticed on this one that this is a little high right here on this, uh, this lip. About an eighth of an inch. Got away from somebody on a planer 
on the joint. So we're going to take the planer here. This is just courtesy for the sheet rocker. There's a lot of people out there in the building business, a lot of homeowners. It starts out with the concrete. If the concrete's a little bit off, he'll say, don't worry about it. The framer will take care of it. Framer comes along and it's a little bit off. His frame's a little bit off. He says, don't worry about it. Sheet rocker will take care of it. Sheet rocker comes along. He don't take care of it. Now you got a gap up there about half inch. It'll get covered by the carpet layer. And it all comes down to the, the painter. The painter's the one that'll take care of it. And they usually do. They hock you or something. But, uh, before we get there, uh, courtesy to the sheet rocker. So it's nice and flush right there. We're going to shave a little off this.
So uh, conventional builders, you know, you, the, the house is set there, it's getting rained on a couple, three days, and uh, then the roofer comes out and he does his thing, covers it up. You're never going to know that it got rained on. All you did, you come out there, you see that the shingles are on there. Maybe one day you'll get up in the attic in there and don't be surprised if you see mushrooms growing out of your OSB. I've seen it. Leave it up to me, I'm, I will get a little artistic. 